Hi, sup. Gonna show you how to do plugins. Um, find plugins in Bitwig. So when you start Bitwig, it's probably gonna look like this or something. Yeah. And you wanna go over to the right to what's called the browser. You have devices, presets, samples, multi-samples, music, clips, files, and your configuration. <clears throat> Basically, the first two are just for VSTs or any kind of presets you've made internally in Bitwig for the VSTs. The samples are any kind of audio libraries you give it. Uh, multi samples are something else. Um, I'm not 100% sure. And uh, music's like any kind of music you have on your computer, like songs. Clips are like MIDI clips. And then browser files, just nerdy stuff. And then configuration. Is where you actually put the uh, where your my library is that will dictate what's inside of your samples. So, for example, I have my. Right, let me think about this one for a second. Hmm. Sorry. Hang on. That's where things get saved to by default, <clears throat> and that will choose that automatically. Down here in the sound content locations, this is what dictates is what in your samples. So um, in here, I've got I've got a folder. And uh, let me grab this here. So basically, in here, I have my documents set up. So I have my sample library and then like my plugins in my documents. I'd recommend doing something like this because. <clears throat> In some DAWs, like FL Studio, for example, um, when you go into there, there's like a plugins thing in here for VSTs, and you can put whatever you want in here. I wouldn't recommend putting it inside of any DAWs built-in folders, like, ever, because if you uninstall that DAW, then your plugins are gone and everything's back, so I'd like to put everything in my documents. So... That's where it is. So I add my sound locations as like my libraries here in my documents in uh, my sample library. And then it's detecting like all of the audio that I've got in there. And then you choose your plugin location. So once again, it's in the same spot, except it's called my plugins instead of my sample library. And then I added those. Now, one thing you want to do to maximize the amount of usage you can get out of like plugins and like <clears throat> this stops them from like crashing and if they do makes it really easy to get them to reload again because if you don't set it up like this 99% of the time you try to reload all the plugins at once um what it will do is it will just fail so you have to come into your preferences you can get there by pressing like control comma or like the left little arrow looking thing down by your question mark and slash button or you just click on options preferences and um, when it's in the options here, it says preferences and it says control plus comma. It just means you press control and comma at the same time. It doesn't mean anything about the plus button on your keyboard. Come in here, go to plugin management, click on your 32 and 64 bit, and you want to. And if you found it, you have to find it first. You have to come in here and you want to select all the plugins you would like to run like separately from the program which makes like a plugin host per thing so I have the things that I use like constantly set up in here so I go through and select them all and then I just click OK and then yeah, every time you start a new plugin what happens is let's use this as an example here if I were to load this project, you might see some screen up here in the top left corner. Oh, they're not popping up. That's disappointing. On my my Mac, it does that, and sometimes on the desktop, it definitely does that. Some like little black screens will pop up that kind of look like the uh, they kind of look like this thing, and they pop up real quick, but they're all gray, and these will pop up, and um. A bunch of them will pop up in the corner like small ones just real quick and you can't really select them or anything but it's basically just 
running like an emulator for like every single plugin that's connected to Bitwig. So yeah, and then this DSP value here in the top left corner by where your tempo is, is how much, um, I don't know what DSP stands for. I just know it's basically a measurement of how much of the CPU is being affected by what you're doing in the program. And the higher this little bar is, um, the more problems you're gonna have where things will start clipping. But inside Bitwig, um, Bitwig itself won't actually crash from having like a really high DSP so much. Um, your plugins will experience issues which might slow down Bitwig, but for the most part, it's not a problem. I would recommend if you have anything that's RAM intensive, like especially Serum or Battery, you would want to select like your MIDI or whatever after you've got it placed down. And for the most part, just um, there's two ways to go about this. You could bounce them in place like that or the smarter option this is freezing a track is you select all of them you can hold shift or yeah hold shift and click and it'll select like everything like in that line or whatever if you click at the end select everything bounce it and you can choose uh pre fx post fader or pre fader which is basically post fx pre fader then post fader which is also post fx post fader is usually the safest way to go um because in case you did make some difference this changes which i did so the fader is this thing that's a fader so i did that now i can click on this battery there's so once again there's two ways to do this you can either just deactivate this audio so select all the odd or sorry the midi and oops can click like the mute button here or press alt and a at the same time and i'll mute it the best way to save your RAM is to just click Alt A on the track itself. So now this track is 100% useless and does absolutely nothing. And this is good because your program will now close this therefore mentioned emulator of like whatever plugin. And then it will not have to, to worry about it. So then your DSP will go down because like every, every sear in my ad will raise the DSP even though I might not be actually using the plugin or the plugin doesn't actually have any audio so the doing the track deactivation instead of the midi or audio deactivation will save you more um time but might be more of a pain in the butt i don't know it's real quick too it turns it off so fast like i'm amazed in this program how fast you can like bounce stuff like click this control b enter and then alt a and then it's bounced done super fast and yeah that's it